Well, hello and welcome to Willow Ridge Acres. Today on our small farm, we're expecting a litter of puppies from one of our livestock guardian dogs. And we want to share with you what we've done to prepare. Now this is Mabel, she's the mama dog. This is gonna be her second litter and she's a Great Pyrenees. She's a livestock guardian dog and uh, she's currently in labor. Um, one of the first things that you check for to know if they're going in labor or not is uh, there's a, a drop in their temperature about 24 hours before they'll start having the puppies. Uh, the normal temperature range for a dog is just over 100 degrees and within 24 hours of delivery their temperature will drop below 100 degrees so uh, you use a rectal thermometer and you check the dog's temperature and mabel here her temperature has been uh about 99.2 for most of the day so she's she's getting ready to have these puppies now, because Great Pyrenees are an outdoor working breed of dog, Mabel's not gonna have her puppies in our house. Uh, most, most of the time, these dogs will have their puppies in a barn. We don't have a barn just yet. In the long-term plans for our small farm, we're gonna build a pole barn for our dogs. But for now, we've built this temporary shelter you see here behind us. We're just using what we've got on the farm. That's one of the pro tips for farm living, small farm living, you gotta use what you've got. So we had this 10 by 10 kennel, bought some cheap tarps from Walmart and some piping, made a roof and some walls, threw some uh, heat lamps in there to keep her warm because we're right in the middle of January. It gets a little cold here, uh, even in South Texas. So we can keep those puppies warm. We can keep them out of the elements, out of the rain, whatever it is, out of the wind as well. Here we are inside the shelter and you'll see that Mabel is actively uh, nesting. She's digging around in the hay. She's trying to find somewhere where she can be uh, safe and relaxed to have her puppies. Optimally, we're gonna keep her right here inside of this, this wooden container. What this is, this is called a whelping box. Um, and this whelping box is just, I made it out of, um, some plywood, four by eight sheets of plywood. I believe I just used two sheets of it. And um, I strategically built it to where, you, if you can see here, um, the, the pieces slide and fit into each other because then that way when we're not having puppies, I can uh, take this apart and stack it and uh, it stores a lot better in our garage that way. Uh, inside the whelping box here, you'll see this is what's called a pig rail. I don't know why it's called a pig rail. You would think it would be called a puppy rail, but it's called a pig rail. I made this one out of just PVC pipe. You can find that at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, very cheap. Um, you can see it just needs to stand off of the wall, off of the side of the whelping box, uh, just an inch or two and up off of the ground, just a few inches. And the purpose of this is that when mama has the puppies, uh, the puppies are going to be all around in this box and mama is going to come in and lay down to, to nurse them. And if this was not here, mama might be able to uh, squeeze them against this wall and suffocate them. You definitely don't want to do that. Uh, so what this does is it provides a spot where the dog, the puppies can be down here by the wall. Mama comes and lays up against this and they've got a safe little cushion area there where they won't be suffocated. As you can see here, I built just a simple little latch and a hinged door that just swings open and allows mama to come in and out of the box, um, but you can close it to keep the puppies in. Uh, for the first week or so, the puppies won't be big enough or strong enough to climb out even with this door open. Uh, so mama can kind of come in and go as she pleases. But uh, after a couple weeks, the dogs, the puppies know how to get out of this door. So you'll just shut this door and latch it and now the puppies can't get out. Mama can, but the puppies can't. Uh, super simple to build this. I literally use a trash can lid as my stencil to get this, uh, this you know, curve here, this radius and um, marked it off with a pencil and then use a jigsaw to cut it. And once I cut it out, just slapped a uh, hinge that I had laying around in the garage and um, that latch there. And once again, to provide heat in here for the puppies, we've got an extension cord that comes out to the, to the little temporary shelter for them. And I've got a series of these heat lamps uh, that keep it not hot, but uh, not cold down here at the surface level for the puppies. 
All right, quick change of plans after doing a little bit of research and thinking through it a little bit more, we decided to uh, change out the hay in the whelping box uh, in favor of just a blanket and a tarp. I'll show you here. All right, so the idea is that uh, if there was hay in the whelping box when the puppies were born, if the puppies were to um, ingest any of the hay, the puppies aren't able to digest that hay and uh, it could be really bad for them. Uh, so we've gone with a blanket like this with a tarp underneath it to kind of keep the mess a little bit better. And um, once the puppies are a little bit bigger, uh, we'll be able to put hay in there instead and that's a lot easier to clean out. So with this, uh, we will have to uh, take this blanket up probably once every day and wash it and switch it out with a different blanket. I wanted to also show you in this bucket, we've got some supplies just ready for when uh, the birthing starts. We've got some couple just old beach towels to clean up the mess. We've also got a, um, you know, a box of gloves here, medical gloves. We've got some treats for mama, we've got flashlight um, and just some other miscellaneous things, some other gloves in there. So you can never be too prepared. Um, for the most part, this, especially this breed, as a large breed dog, uh, the Great Pyrenees, they do amazing with their own birds. Last time Mabel didn't need any assistance or help from us. We were there watching as she gave birth, uh, but she took care of, uh, you know, pushing every single puppy out and took care of the afterbirth. That can be a little disgusting if you've never watched that, uh, for, you know, for the first time, if that's your first time experiencing it. Uh, but the dogs do eat the afterbirth um, of, you know, of their litter. Um, from what I've researched, it's actually an instinctual thing. It's for one, it, it uh, provides the mama some uh, nutrients that it needs because uh, mama stops eating for a day or so before uh, giving birth. So she needs some of that nutrients. But also, especially with this type of breed, uh, being outside, uh, them eating that afterbirth is actually an instinctual thing to keep predators away, to, to ward off the smell of the birth because uh, they know that their puppies are definitely very vulnerable to prey. So um, if they can clean up any of the scent and hide that from a pr you know, predator, um, they'll help increase the chances of their puppies uh, living. So that's kind of why they do it. And this is Mac, he's the proud papa. He's a good boy. He's a really big boy. He's a little anxious right now because he's waiting for these puppies to be born, aren't you, man? That's a good boy. That's a good boy. But hey, make sure you hit like and subscribe so you don't miss uh, the videos we post of the puppies being born and afterward. Hope to see you soon.